Our next speaker is Elise Lemley, and she is part of the group at Two Bit Circus. She's the director of special projects, and they're doing some amazing things, blending carnival cir and circus themes with um, steam. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Elise Lemley. I'm very excited to be here today uh, to talk with you all about making reality cool again, and um, my particular stint slant on it at uh, Two-Bit Circus is um, play, explode, repeat. So you can't necessarily talk about uh, the engineering space and the state of DIY without looking at this term, STEM, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Unfortunately, when kids today think about STEM, they're still kind of seeing this person. Um, when really, <laughs> and I hope I'm not offending anyone by this image, but uh, you know, the lone white guy coding alone in his office. Um, when really at Two-Bit Circus, we want them to see STEM more like this. And this is one of um, our uh, interactive experiences called Dunk Tank Flambe. And the way that we believe that this is possible is through STEAM, so the addition of art into STEM. And um, one of my favorite quotes from Susan Riley about this is that STEAM brings together the critical components of how and what and laces them together with the why. So it's this relevancy and engagement that really brings STEAM into the 21st century. So why now? Um, and there's been some great discussion about this um, today. So uh, one kind of carrot and one stick. The stick, unfortunately, as, as many of us are aware, um, the US is, is, despite an interest and a real big push towards STEM, we're still kind of falling behind. Um, and as, if we want our students to be prepared for a 21st century workforce, we need to change something. So fortunately, um, why now the carrot? Um, if you'll indulge me in taking you on a uh, very short little history lesson. If we go back about uh, 30 years, this is, uh, coding used to be terrible. Um, for those of you that may be familiar, this is the hello world, the initial communication. Um, this is Greek. I mean, this to me, I, I don't come from a technical background. This is terrifying um, and pretty inaccessible. So if we jump forward another 10 years, um, it started to get a little bit better. Um, now it's sort of mimicking more natural language. You can start to see hello world in there. Um, jump forward again, a lot easier, um, much more accessible, much e much a much easier place to engage and jump in. And as um, we've been highlighting today across many platforms, um, there's also Scratch and uh, visually based programming, which is one of my favorites. It's actually how I learned to code. Um, and we love using this along with some of the other fabulous um, platforms that are available today. So this is actually not just limited to the digital tools um, for coding. There's also fabulous resources. This is an Autodesk, another Autodesk uh, product called Tinkercad um, that's available free online that allows students to really engage really quickly and get moving and grooving, um, as well as physical tools. And this is something that at 2-Bit Circus we're really excited about, the interaction between physical and digital. So we have uh, the Makey Makey, which was also highlighted today, um, as well as Squishy Circuits out of the University of St. Thomas. So, and these are just a few of some of the fabulous tools that are much cheaper, much more readily available, but it also begs this question, so we've got this cool stuff, and what do we do with it? I mean, it's only as good as the projects that kids are able to create. So, one of our favorite quotes at uh, Two-Bit Circus is from the great author, Madeline LaAngle, that inspiration comes during work rather than before it. So, for us, this means actively engaging in projects, really going out there and making things. And at Two-Bit Circus, um, our focus with students is in game making for learning, which was wonderful to hear Dr. Kafai talk about that earlier today. Um, so, we believe there are four crucial components for, um, for successful projects as well as um, integrating them into a design process. So this is our version here um, that allows us also to start to begin with assessment. So we have inspiration, exploration, planning, making or creating, and then sharing and revising. And it's through this nonlinear cyclical process that students begin to um, actualize their ideas. And um, I also reserve judgment to be able to uh, add to this since I created it, but um, I, in, in working with students and now with educators, um, we've also also added relevancy and transparency as part of this process. I haven't figured out how to fit that in quite yet. Um, but these as being absolutely paramount to engaging students and keeping them engaged. One of the things we find is that if either of these are missing, it doesn't matter how cool the stuff is you're doing, the kids won't keep going with it. 
So I mentioned game making for learning as one of our favorite ways of approaching this. So these are some of the projects that we have done with students and now with teachers. And you know, if you look at game making and game for learning, this is by no means a new concept. Um, however, with the ease and accessibility of new tools, we start to see real development with our students. And this also begins to be able to be a measurable skill. So if you look at um, the main, main definition of creativity, which has in the past been really seen is a soft skill. Um, it can be broken down into the ability to take risks, problem identification and articulation, toler tolerating ambiguity or uncertainty, and in, in cross-integration of knowledge. And um, through project-based learning, and in particular STEAM-based learning, we start to see this. So at 2Bit, um, our mission is uh, codified in our STEAM carnival, which we believe is the carnival reimagined with robots, fire, and lasers. So we, our goal is to inspire the next generation of inventors through game making and play. And we highlight this as professional nerds through our game. So um, a very quick showcase. This is not one of our games, but if, I hope uh, many of you are familiar with this kind of classic game where you throw the ball and the horses go across the track. Well, at 2-Bit, we thought it'd be way more fun to make this life-size. So um, here is our first prototype. Uh, we've just actually been see and see, see and seeing the uh, new ones out, out in our shop in downtown LA uh, this week. But basically, what happens here is there is a teeny tiny accelerometer inside of that horse. And as the students rock back and forth, the signal is wirelessly transmitted to the on-screen visualization and um, the young, young woman there to the side is uh, there to as the sort of barker to help them uh, make sure they're playing safely but also help to make the connection between the game they're playing and what's happening behind the scenes and how they might be able to create that at home. So another version that uh, you saw a little preview of, this is a, the previous version of the dunk tank, a classic carnival favorite. Um, we decided to be way cooler and a lot more inspirational if we translated that water into fire. So this is our dunk tank flambe. Um, it debuted in Long Beach last fall and we'll be taking it up to the Bay Area and then across the country um, along with the rest of our carnival in the coming year. Um, and basically we're using the carnival as a hook to engage students and then to say like, wow, that's awesome for, to that aha moment okay, this is something that now I have a little bit more interest in. I might be able to go, go home and dig through the garage, see what I have at home, and create something pretty amazing. So thank you very much. <laughs>